Hello everyone. Let's see how the new Claude Sonnet 3.5 compares to the GPT 4.0. I'm going to be looking at inputs on this video where the LLM is going to be prompted to guide me in making a circuit for a push button that toggles an LED on the STM 32F030 microcontroller. The video that you're probably watching right now is a condensed or shorter version that has really just the prompting and the results, but I don't go into any deep explanation on the actual code that's being created by the LLMs. But I do, for my members, have a very detailed version of this video uh, describing all of the lines of the code, uh, talking about the circuit, and for whoever wants to really learn about the programming and how all this stuff works, I urge you to either become a Patreon or become a member of the channel. Let's start with ChatGPT. I'm using the STM32F030 reference expert uh, GPT that I created because it has the reference manual and the data sheets built in. I want to create a prompt that is very descriptive of what I want to do. So let's start by first stating what we want the, the entire circuit and program. So we're being very descriptive of using a push button and toggling an LED. We should probably mention that the push button is momentary. If we don't know anything about creating a circuit or programming a microcontroller, we won't know what to specify in terms of what pin to use for the LED and what pin to use for the push button switch. I want the LLM to see what it tells me initially, but I want it to specify a specific pin. I'll probably need to create uh, another prompt to guide it on which pin to use if we have a specification for that, because some pins are used for certain features that we may want to use in the future. Obviously, things can change, but if you've created a circuit that's already soldered together, then that would be rather difficult to do. So let's see what it gives me initially. I'm also asking it to describe the circuit. I want to know all of the things it needs to do to make this work. So let's see what it does. So it's giving us the circuit and the program. It's interesting that it created an ASCII diagram for the circuit. Well, let's look at that in a moment. I'm not sure why it specified the F4, but I'm not really sure if that makes much of a difference. So let's let's take a look. So we'll need the STM32F030, the LED. We'll need a resistor that is 220 ohms. I'm probably going to be using a 320 ohms. A push button, a pull down resistor for the button, which is 10 kilo ohms, and bread, breadboard and jumper wires. So we already have these set up. And if you don't have it set up, I'll put a link in the description on my typical setup, just in case you've purchased my kit. But you can also use other resources to set up a circuit for yourself. And that video will be a good guide on getting started. So it's telling us to use PA5, which is interesting, for the LED, and the push button using PA0. So I know that the PAs are for ADC. So let's see if it will change to a more appropriate pin. I also want to see this program in register level. While it's going, let's go ahead and see what it says in the beginning. If you plan to use the ADC in the future, it is essential to select the GPIO pins that do not conflict with the ADC channels. For the F030, avoid using the GPIO pins that are also connected to the ADC. So that would be, let's see. So it's using the PA0 for the push button and the PA5 for the LED, which do not conflict with the ADC channels. Let me go ahead and go and check what is the ADC. All right, so the PAs, ADC N0, ADC N1. So let's go back to GPT and, and inform that the PAs are ADC. So it looks like it's not using the reference manual or the data sheet. Given that the PA0 to PA15 are ADC channels, it would be prudent to use the pins that are not associated with the ADC. It's going to use the PB1 for the LED and PB0 for the push button. So here it's telling us how to connect to the circuit, and here's the code. 
All right, so the first thing we need to do is set up the circuit. So let's go ahead and do that. You can see that the circuit that we have is the standard circuit. Here is the circuit with some modification because ChatGPT did not get it right. I explained the issues in my extended video, but this goes to show at this point, you really can't trust the GPT when it comes to circuit building, at least not yet. Check this out. The next day, a new version of GPT is available. Now I'm conflicted. Should I start a new chat or continue this existing chat. Well, let's go ahead and just check to see what ChatGPT says with this error in this particular chat. Okay, it looks like it says, you are correct, the previous description incorrectly connected both leads to the push button to ground. Here is the correct wiring. Okay, let's see if we wired it correctly. So here's the push button circuit, the push button to GPIO PB0. Very strange, it still says the same thing. Okay, so I had to kind of guide it a little bit. Shouldn't one of the push button leads be connected to the positive 3.3? And it says, yes, you are correct. One lead of the push button should be connected to the positive 3.3 volt supply to properly read the button press state. Here's the correct circuit design and code. <laughs> so let's see, the LED. Okay, so this is the same. Push button circuit, now it says, connect one side of the push button to, gr to the pin. Connect the other side of the push button to the 3.3 volt supply. Connect a 10 kilo ohm pull down resistor between PB0 and ground. Okay, so it's the same thing. So if I'm connecting the GPIO pin to PB0, it's also going to be connecting to ground. I'm going to ask it another question about the pull down state of the pin. So I'm asking if the 10K resistor is necessary since it's already being pulled down internally in code. So now it's going to tell me that the external pull down resistor, which is the 10K ohm one, is not necessary. So <laughs> there are still some issues with uh, ChatGPT. So I'm going to go to the new version and see if there's any difference. So I'm not, also, I'm kind of wondering if Claude is going to be any better. Okay, so I've started a new chat. Hopefully it's going to be in the latest version. I'm going to input the prompt verbatim, the initial prompt that I used before. I would like to create a circuit and a program that toggles the LED using a push button. The push button is a simple momentary switch. Please use an appropriate pin for the push button and LED. I would like you to describe the circuit where I need to wire the push button and LED and any other components that I'll need. So the first thing I want to check to see if the wiring is correct. It looks like it's using PA0 and PA1, but I'm kind of curious if, if it's telling me to put it to the positive rail. Connect one uh, terminal of the push button to GPIO pin configured as input. Connect the other terminal to ground. And connect a pull down resistor 10k ohms between the input and ground to ensure the stable low state when the button is not pressed. So that's good information, but it's still wanting me to connect it to ground. This is interesting here. So PA0 input pin. I don't really understand the, the diagram that it's creating here. Does that mean switch? It says pull down resistor here. So I'm not really sure what this means. And it looks like it has a completely different program as well. It's using an interrupt handler, which is kind of interesting. So everything is happening within the interrupt, which is actually a really good solution. So let's go back to the initial chat and I will copy the code here and put it into the STM32 cube IDE. All right, let's go ahead and start the STM cube IDE. All right, let's get the code. All right, we're gonna get the first code that it gave us. So I'm gonna copy that code and paste it here. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. Okay, let's plug in the ST-Link and the microcontroller. Let's see if it works. And there was no errors. So let's take a look at the function of the circuit. So it looks like it's working. The other program that used the interrupt, this is the one, but I wanted to use the PB0 and PB1 so I'm going to ask ChatGPT to make those changes. So let's go ahead and put it into the IDE and see what happens. All right, I'm going to erase all of this code and paste in the new code. Run it and see if it has any errors in the compiling. No, no errors. And it's compiled and sent to the microcontroller. So let's see what happens. So after flashing the microcontroller successfully, when I press the button, nothing happens. So that's a fail. All right, let's see how Claude does with our request. I'm gonna go ahead and use the previous prompt that I used for ChatGPT. 
but I need to add one thing. I want to make sure that it knows that we're using the STM32 F030 microcontroller. And I also want to specify the pins because I kind of put ChatGPT through the ringer with that, um, asking it not to use an ADC. And I want it to, I want Claude to use the same circuit that I have already set up. I would like to use PB0 for the push button and PB1 for the LED. Let's see if it works. All right, let's take a look at how the how Claude is suggesting I wire this up. So connect one terminal of the push button to ground, connect the other terminal to PB0, and connect the 10 ohm pull up to 3.3 volts. And that's not what I want to do because that means that it will, the state of the pin is idling at a pull up or at a high state. And I'd rather keep it the same as the circuit. So let's specify. Okay, so hopefully it'll, it'll adjust the program accordingly. Okay, so PB0, okay, good. And then a 10K ohm pull down resistor between PB0 and ground. But there's no need for this because it's internally pulled down, hopefully. Let's see, enable pull down on PB0. So it's internally being pulled down, so we don't need that external resistor. So I'll keep it the way it is, even though I am using the resistor. So let's go ahead and copy this, and let's put it into the IDE. Let's get rid of this one, which is the ChatGPT version, and paste in the new one. All right. Looks good. Let's go ahead and save. And I have my programmer already connected. So I'll just go ahead and press play. See how it works. Zero errors. That's good. All right. So let's take a look at the circuit and see if it works. All right. So it's been flashed. If I press the button, it should turn on and off. Yeah. So it looks like the Claude version worked for the interrupts. But when you're asking ChatGPT without giving much specification on if you want it to use interrupts or not, uh, it is a, I guess, a roll of the dice if it's going to work or not. So um, if it doesn't work, you can inform ChatGPT and hopefully it'll get it right. Let's see if, if it does actually get it right if I inform it. Looks like it's completely rewriting the code, which is interesting and it still does not enable the system configuration and it also doesn't do the priority so that's interesting let's see if we can guide it ah look at that it's adding into a priority let's see if that helps okay it did do it this time interesting so i kind of prodded it well let's see if it works doesn't hurt to try let's go ahead and press play and see if it works okay it was successful now it works Okay, ChatGPT will eventually work if it's prodded, but I didn't really give it a lot of... I mean, Claude did get it right the first time, uh, but it used an interrupt method to do it initially, and ChatGPT didn't. It used a, a different type of program where it was just checking the state of the input data register. So there's two ways to do things. Well, we can do this many different ways in the microcontroller, but it showed us two different ways, and Claude decided to use the interrupt method, which I actually like. It's a better way to do it because it frees up the microcontroller, and in this case, it was zero shot.